This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and Fennec Foxes. I have to say, I kind of like these episodes where I think they're a little softer and more positive. The kid I was with kept trying to hand it to me and I was like, look, I'm here to help out, not ruin my outfit. So yeah. no. <laughs> but this is what you do to fishermen or hunters right. <laughs> when they come home. Yeah. They walk an inch into the house uh -huh. and then or everything even better, comes if you've off. got a garage. IFAF. Idaho Falls Local, Independent, Alternative, Media, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. All right, the lights are down low. The studio's a crisp 69 degrees. Nice. Um, and the kids are safely p partying responsibly, I assume, <laughs> in between Albertsons and McDonald's. In For some reason. There. Right. Yeah. What? We might have to do a little inside edition on that. It might be the new uh, cruise. Uh, expose? I don't know. <laughs> Something. <laughs> All right. On this episode, what do we call people from Idaho Falls? The answer may not be that simple. Ex-Californians? <laughs> <laughs> have we watched the Olympics and some fun things going on at the zoo, the Butterfly Haven, Youth Jam, uh, which which is over. You can't go to. I don't know why I even brought that up. In the well, because it's fun and it's every year. So next year you sure can. And you'll get to see the balloon display at Ammon Days. I had a buddy say something like, "What are you bi monthly now?" <laughs> and look, it's uh, summer. Of course, we're gonna, we're going to be out doing stuff. Yeah. Look, we made fifty shows in not counting the bonus episodes mm -hmm. in a year. Yeah. And I feel like there are fifty two weeks in a year. Yeah. And. You don't work 52 weeks in a year. I know you don't, buddy. If you're lucky, at least. Yeah, <laughs> you work 50. And to be fair, I really want to go more European. Like, mm -hmm. I want to take a month off in yeah, the middle of the summer. That. We might. And, like, go to Greece or whatever. And instead of making <laughs> it a, an episodic order, yeah, go to Santorini. Yeah, wouldn't That's that be That's the place amazing? with the white The and white the buildings and the blue roofs. water. Oh, yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's put that on our goals. Yeah. There was this Swedish company I worked with for a while, mm -hmm. X5 Music. Swedish? <laughs> it's of Swedish. <laughs> and um, the guy was like, hey, I'm, yeah, I'm on my summer holiday, uh -huh. and I'll see you in September. And I was like, what? Yeah. They know, how, they know where it's at. They know how to do they it. They really do. And here's the thing, like... We have we have some of the like most upset workers. People aren't happy. Yeah, you know we get like the least amount of time off of like everyone else. Did you know that medieval peasants actually get got more holidays <laughs> than we do now? And and uh, and like we're not Japan either. You know where oh, they Japan pride has themselves a better one too. on falling asleep at their desk. Right, but even they take more time off than we do. Do they really? They do. They literally have more vacation time wow. than we do. Kevin, you want to chime in on that? <laughs> but okay, so we actually, this was funny. We watched the movie Holiday Inn. We did. I got a wild hair up my butt one night. Well, in we the were, whole time. We Go were ahead. looking for something to watch, <laughs> like we often do, because The Boys was amazing. Uh huh. Um, Breaking Bad, uh, I'm still on season five. I know, I, I know. I never thought I'd watch it, mm -hmm. but I just had a couple of people who I care about a lot. <laughs> Carl. And my friend Brad say, oh, dude, you gotta. And JJ. And JJ. You're right. You, he was the first one, probably. Probably. But, you know, whenever you have friends that say, oh, you gotta. Right. What I think <laughs> is, oh, really? I gotta. <laughs> but yeah, I do. I think you're just contrary. <laughs> I want to I wanna go back and watch all the ones I should have watched back in the day. Right, right. We sort of started backwards. Game of Thrones, uh -huh. done. so good. Baking, Breaking Bad, almost done. Uh-huh. Um, Probably going to go on to The Walking Dead. Walking Dead for sure. Uh huh. Sopranos. Going yeah, back know, that we, far. I've already seen all of Sex first, in the City. Of course you have. <laughs> have you ever seen Gilmore Girls? I'm a Miranda. Girls? <laughs> I'm a Samantha. <laughs> I've never Girls? seen Girl, Gilmore Girls. I love yeah. Gilmore Girls. It's so good. Huh. I would love to watch that with you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. We'll get them all done. Now with streaming and binging, it's just so easy. It is. It really is. Now, here's the thing about Holiday Inn. The entire time we were watching it, at least for the first 20 minutes, and even a little after that, mm -hmm. I, so as soon as you mentioned it, I was like, Mike, are we about to watch a Christmas movie in the middle of July? Because you, you are were very like, much opposed. Even though it is now August, you were very much, this was in July, you were very much opposed to Christmas in July. I hate it. I hate it. Well, because Christmas as gets so much monopoly over the year. 
Does it? It okay, does. Whatever. It does. As soon as Halloween is over, it's Christmas. Poor Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving never has a chance. <laughs> you know, I'm going to say something controversial here. <laughs> Thanksgiving. Well, kind of. I mean, kind of. It's a bullshit holiday. I mean, the it's food just, is great. But also, like, the whole lore behind di- it is it's a one big meal. lie. Yeah. It, it, right. Yeah, yeah. We now know that it wasn't that cooperative yeah, between no. the pilgrims and the Indians. Yeah. I mean, Little yeah, there Americans. are definitely lots of reasons why I kind of say Thanksgiving. <laughs> but also, like, I feel Here's, a little bit. <laughs> we're all, what? We're ten, 10 minutes into the episode. We already got a hot take. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, I just, I really like watching seasonal movies in the season when you should be watching them. Yes, you I, know? I understand. And so when you mentioned Holiday Inn, I was like, Mike, I'm not about to watch a Christmas movie in the middle of July. This better not be a Christmas movie. And I was proven wrong. You were correct. It was totally just a movie that happened to mention holidays. And that's so different than a Christmas movie. Now, how I define a Christmas movie is that Christmas has to have an integral part to the plot. Yes. You know, like there has to be something about the spirit of Christmas or like the magic of Christmas. And if you just believe, yeah, right. All the good things will come to you. And Santa Claus is God for children. Mm-hmm. And no, I don't. <laughs> Kinda. No, if but, you're good, you get a reward. Well, yeah, an unverifiable one. Yeah. Um, but you just have to believe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now we're going way crazy. <laughs> Point is, somehow I got you to watch Holiday Inn. I was ruminating on some song. I don't know what it was. Right. And we learned a few things from that movie. First of all, it is definitely, I think, 1947, Bing right. Crosby, Fred Astaire. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely the first appearance of the song White Christmas. Right, which is pretty amazing. Christmas, yeah. I mean, not only the best-selling Christmas song of all time, but the mm-hmm. best-selling a song of right. all time. Yeah, which how wild out is that? Paul McCartney, Beatles, blows him away. Mm-hmm. There was some uh, suggestion of maybe not sometime in the 80s, but yeah. Okay, okay. White Christmas, best-selling Christmas, sorry, best-selling song. Song of all time. Of all time. Yeah. 80 years ago. And it's a great song, so I get it. When what? Let's do the math. 1947 minus 2024. Uh, 60. So, 60? 63. I think no, it was. Uh, 57. 202. This is the thing. We never do math in our head on the show, <laughs> ever. Minus 1947. 77 years ago. Wow, I was so, when so you, off. Yeah, we were, yeah, exactly. Whoops. That's why we don't do this. But but <laughs> when you think about, does Christmas really come earlier and earlier every year? Would you like to know when White Christmas was a hit single on the radio in 1947? Can I guess? Yeah. I would guess, because of the movie, probably around August. It, you're close. It was Halloween Day. Really? October 31st? Mm -hmm. So when everybody's talking about how come I see Christmas stuff November 1st, (laughs) it's been happening for 77 years. Shut your mouth. Right, right. Uh (laughs) It can't creep up too much more. Now, we already have Halloween stuff out in the middle of summer, which I love so much, by the way. I was Justin Michaels today admiring they're amazing, like hippie still Halloween stuck on stuff. That orange I'm, and pink. Oh, I'm so stuck on it because it's yeah. so cool looking. They have these little velvety cats that I really want, but they only have them in the hot pink and the orange. But I really want them in the light pink that they've got too. So I need to like get online and find one I think because they're really cute. But a couple more points to be made about that movie. Mm-hmm. The first one is, uh, he they blow their load. 27 minutes into the movie, right? Bing Crosby sings White Christmas. Uh huh. And I look at you and I said, is this a Christmas movie? <laughs> and you said, not yet. Right. And then I think I checked in with you another hour into the movie and mm-hmm. I said, is this a Christmas movie? No, nope, not yet. Yeah. And um, I mean, it certainly has the Christmas undertones, but right. the most popular song of all time mm-hmm. ever is from about Christmas 
is from a movie that's not about Christmas. It's How ab- funny is it's that? It's about a dude who runs a bed and breakfast that's only open on holidays. And yeah. by the way, we learn a lot about holidays and how yeah. they used to be 77 years ago. Yeah, what was the one that we found interesting? I know that Lincoln's birthday Two ins- things. was the, instead of President's Day. Yeah, well, it was so Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday were sort of celebrated independently. Right, right. Then they combined them and that's why we have President's Day. Right. And sorry if you watch the movie for the blackface, because yikes. Yeah, that part was a little much. And the movie overall, I would have to say, is kind of cheesy. because the I whole mean, the concept, dancing is incredible. The dancing, oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's Fred Astaire. So. And, and the singing from Bing Crosby is incredible. Right. Except for when he sings, because um, they do, they're open every holiday, you mm-hmm. see. And so you go to this inn, and they entertain you with songs relating to that holiday right right and one of them is like i'd write a sonnet about your easter bonnet right from the easter (laughs) parade (laughs) and apparently that i don't know if that was the um you know how christina aguilera is famous for running those scales her and mariah uh carey and whoever all the divas really Mm -hmm. but bing had bing crosby who was the owner of holiday inn and yes, by the way, the inn that the chains named themselves after, but he was mm-hmm. like, <laughs> Easter parade. And I was like, nah, you're stretching him pretty thin there, buddy. Right. Yeah. He was kind of <laughs> going for it. <laughs> yeah. 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 But overall, I thought it was a fun little movie. It was a good time. I'm glad we watched it. Um, and well, le- let me wrap oh, up. Yeah. The uh, other thing you were going to say about the other holiday. I, I was, remember what it was now. Oh, yes. Do you know what it was? I do. Go it was Halloween. Yeah. They completely skip Halloween. So here's my justi- my justification for it. We were just talking last episode about how the next thing after the 4th of July is Halloween. Right. They didn't have Halloween back then. I mean, right. they kind of did, but I, it okay, wasn't a thing. huge deal. They did still celebrate Halloween, but even now, Halloween isn't a federally recognized holiday. And I think that's the difference. Ah, maybe I think it needs to be. I think he was going for federally recognized holidays, not just plain old holidays. Right, bank holidays. Right, exactly. Where we can get away with Muffy in the Hamptons. Exactly. Well, and mm. taking the day off. Like, you can't take Halloween off. Right. You know? Isn't Alec Baldwin, he just reduced the price of his home in the Hamptons from $19 million to $10 million or something insane Whoa. like that. Yeah. Wow, half off. May have that wrong. <laughs> So, Kevin, pick that up for us, would you? Yeah, right. <laughs> Who's Kevin? Brand new listeners. Who's this Kevin guy? He's oh, the most interesting oh, you'll find in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But, uh, yeah, so the, the second thing that's interesting about that movie is, I mean, I think we've listed four or five things now. Uh-huh. But, you know, you, you watch the calendar go by from 4th of July uh-huh. to, and this was, po- this was just post-World War II. Mm-hmm. Baby boomers were being born a lot. Yep. Probably to this movie. Right. Uh, but then a calendar goes from 4th of July to Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, no Halloween? What? Right, right. Well, and I know that Halloween was still celebrated and still a relatively big thing. But since it wasn't a federally recognized holiday, I think that's why they skipped it in the movie. But I know that because when I was a little kid, my aunt had all of these really cool vintage Halloween decorations, including these cool old Halloween cards. Like, people used to give each other cards on Halloween. Okay. You know? And they had, like... I think they even had, like, dates on them and stuff. Like, tarot cards? No, no, no. Like How are they decorated? Like, greeting cards. Oh, okay. You know? But, like, they'd have, like, little girls in a witch costume with a little black cat and stuff like that. And they were really cute. Okay. You know? Um, And they'd say, boo on them. Yeah, or something like that. And, like, they've got that, like, old vintage Americana look, but it's, like, Halloween-y. It's super cute. Mm Mm-hmm. So, anyway. I knew that they celebrated it. And it was probably a big enough deal that, like, kids were stoked, but it probably just wasn't federally recognized, and therefore, that's why the Holiday Inn skips it. Why don't um, female ghosts get pregnant? Why? Because male ghosts have Halloweenies. (laughs) I'm so stupid. (laughs) You guys, so dumb. Oh, here's a good one. Knock, knock. Uh, Who's there? Boo. Boo who? You don't have to cry. It's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Different kind of show tonight. I don't hate it. It's called having a good time. 
Yeah. <laughs> if you're not here for a good time, why are you even here? <laughs> oh, so where were we? Uh, bi monthly podcast. No, 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 no. no. We're going to get back on track. Uh, I, have you seen the meme, though, that says, does bisexual mean twice every sexual or once every other sexual? <laughs> it gets so confusing. Hilarious. I love that. <laughs> boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Okay. And can I make a quick It does double your chance of getting a date on a Friday night. Yes. Yeah, it kind of does, huh? Mm, yeah. Well, and not quite, because if anything, it gives you an extra third. Because if you're... Actually, no. It, it's still about... It, it's... Okay. You, you think it comes out all even? I think it comes out more or less even. Okay. Probably you get a little bit of a boost, but okay. So if you were a bisexual girl and half of the population being men, and then probably a quarter of those not liking women, let's say, and then... Right. That's where the real right. math would come into is... And then of the women, you probably have a quarter of those who... Actually, well, that's not. Pro that's probably not true. Probably half because... What percentage of women are into chicks and what percentage of... Right. Who would be open to chicks at least because yeah. here's the thing. You can count the lesbians and the bisexual girls, whereas in the guys, you only have to discount the gay guys. So you're only getting rid of about, a, let's say, a third if everything's perfect. Yeah. So a third of the men you can't have... Um, you know, Let, of the let's available not forget men. the trans community. Well, I'm getting there, though. Okay. Here's the thing. So anyway, so as a bisexual girl, for example, you would get to have your pick of all of the available men who are interested in women, as well as all of the available women who are interested in women, you know, uh, which would definitely give you a little increase. Now, a lot of people think that bisexual means that you're only interested in men or women and not trans people, but that's not at all what the main... like so. The main definition has always been two or more genders. I mean, if you're into both types of uh, gear. Right. And there's somebody who has. One or the other. One doesn't or really the matter. other. Yeah. It doesn't matter like if they present male or female, if they got something. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Well, I'm just and saying. And it's not even Pride Month anymore. <laughs> well, I know anyway. there's at least one guy going, I thought Pride Month was over. Right. Well, and all I'm saying is I think a lot of people have the misconception that bisexuality is trans um, exclusionary, mm -hmm. but I don't believe it is. Although I understand why some people choose to identify as pansexual instead, just so it's very explicitly clear that they're into anyone regardless. Well, yeah, I've seen the flag that has all the colors and mm -hmm. I've thought to myself, well, you know, at some point, if everybody's special, mm -hmm. then no one's special. And I'd kind of like to see it end up like that. Right. Oh, we're all just the same again? Yep. Mm-hmm. When it went, when it went. So hit that like button and let YouTube know you like Idaho Falls infotainment and opinion. Mm -hmm. And let's get started with uh, my favorite so far. There was a thread. What do we call people from Idaho Falls? Okay, I'm intrigued by this. Well, and I thought... Yeah, we should have been asking this a long time ago, but how come we haven't? Mm -hmm. There's Idahoans, there's East Idahoans. We've covered the whole East Idaho versus mm -hmm. Southeastern Idaho. Right, right. And why East Idaho is so much better and mm -hmm. not as cumbersome. And even though it may not be technically correct, there's no Northeast Idaho. Yeah, not really. And there was East and West Germany, so I give it up. It's fine. Right, right. East Idaho it is. Yeah. All right. Um, but what do you call Idaho Fallsians? I mean, I would say Idaho Fallsians. Okay. Um, I heard what I thought was a better one in the comment thread. Oh, what was Even it? Even though I couldn't find it later. IFers. Huh. I like that. You know? I like that. Hey, what's up, IFers? Or I mean, even Idaho Fallsers. What's up, MFers? Like if you were going to have it be longer. We've referred to our audience affectionately yeah. quite a few times before as IFAFMFers. Yeah, which I think is fucking cool. So, <laughs> Since we're not saying the F word, I so, thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it all gets fixed in editing. Except for last episode, I think I said facking. Oh, yeah. Well, that's And fine. somehow that made it through. Well, yeah, if it's an ah. Yeah, there's there's fracking. Yeah. There's facking. And there's... Tacking. Yeah. Backing. Packaging. Sacking. I don't know. Um, Facking. <laughs> <laughs> With an eh. But I do not. I Fawking? We've already talked about They're this. They're the Fockers. <laughs> right. Meet yeah. the Fockers was yeah. a hit movie. Yeah, we're fine. Had a sequel. Yeah. Is that also another movie? With only one sequel? 
Is there a Meet the Fockers okay, 3? Okay, well, to be fair, Meet the Fockers is already a sequel of Meet the Parents. Well, okay. Yeah, damn. All right. So I would say no. Now, okay, I, I do have to ask you this, though. Speaking of movies with two sequels, where we're jumping all around tonight. <laughs> we really are. You know, Holiday Inn has a sequel. Really? Called White Christmas. The, and it's got some great that numbers. That explains a lot. It's got sisters. Yes, sisters. I love the sisters one. Of course, White Christmas. Uh-huh. It's got um, choreography. Yes. With, oh, is Danny Kaye in White Christmas? Oh, gosh. I don't remember. It's been Might so be, long. But they, anyway. It, it amps up and it's in color, whereas right. Holiday Inn, I think, was black and white. Black yeah. and white. There's some other ones other than IFers on this thread that I thought were pretty good. Okay. Um, I think one of the most sensible ones was Idaho Fallsers or Idaho Fallers. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. I, I get that. Mm-hmm. I would also not like to be a faller. Right. Yeah. It makes it sound like we're just tripping all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches be tripping. <laughs> um, there's all also- them Idaho <laughs> fallers be tripping. <laughs> right. Um, uh, another one that I liked was the Idaho's. Okay. Kind of makes you think of Willem Dafoe. L- yeah, a little aggro. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sounds like a sports team. Right. Um, there was also uh, Eagle Rockers. Okay. Which is kind of like Idaho Fallers, but Idaho Fallers, but, but that does sound but then a lot we're better. we're Rockers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but we're also not Eagle Rock anymore. Eagle fair. Rockers. But I mean, it does kind of make more sense because I think Eagle Rock covers more of the general area. Yeah, we could be E R A F. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other one that I really liked, Ida Hoes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What's up, Ida Hoes? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, foes and hoes? Yeah, right. <laughs> foes before hoes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hoes before foes. <laughs> Wait, Ida Bros. Yeah, Ida Bros would be good. Got to be in there. Yeah. Yeah, you can have Ida Bros and Ida Hoes. Yeah. yeah. Although, if we're talking about general Idaho state citizens, I think Idahoans is sort of the given. Right. So, if we're saying Idaho's or Idaho's or Idaho bros, you have to know we're talking about Idaho Falls. I still think IFers is my favorite. I like IFers too. I think, yeah, I think, I think it we'll, makes the most sense. We'll start using that and see if it takes off. Yeah. I think the other one would be Idaho Fallsians. Also, um, we haven't watched any of the Olympics. None of it. I mean, I've seen clips. Here Snoop Dogg is killing it with his narration, and <laughs> I will promise to watch all the memes. But does any okay, and I've seen the comparison between uh Usain Bolt uh-huh. and how he was, you know, I don't know, twenty years ago, something like that, he was in first place. Right. And this year he was in tenth place. In Wild. that sprint that he does. But, Wild. but then for context, they showed the actual picture and they're all like all their legs are right there. Right. Uh-huh. In the same quadrant. Mm-hmm. So it's just interesting how I mean, when Usain Bolt came along, he was called Insane Bolt. Right. Yeah, he was a big deal. And nobody believed he was the fastest man alive. Mm-hmm. And now 10, 20, whatever it's been years later, he's tenth in the world. Yeah. Wow. Well, and also like He's been running for an extra 20 years than his peak performance. Right. Which I think is pretty impressive still. Right. You know, uh, the comparison that I thought was really neat was um, the, I think it's like the 1980s gold winning routine for gymnastics compared to Sim- Simone Biles this year. Okay. I think that's the other one I saw. Did you send that? I think you I sent that You may have sent you. that to me. Yeah. yeah. And holy guacamole, is there such a huge difference? Yeah. Now I attribute it mainly to the fact that you can't really know what's possible until you see someone else do it. And so as the bar gets raised, pun intended, uh, <laughs> you get better and better and you tend to get athletes that are better and better because they have an example that they can learn from versus having to develop it themselves being able to have the example so you can see how to do it yeah makes all the difference yes you know and also i do think that we just have developed a lot more technique in athleticism and performance than we've ever had before and well and we're standing on the shoulder of giants mm-hmm. in any field 
Right. But the one I'm most interested in is the Snoop Dogg commentary because right. it was either Snoop Dogg or a really good imitator that used to do, you can find him everywhere. Right, the Animal Planet thing? On the YouTubes, yeah. Right. Would narrate the uh, the nature stuff yeah. on Animal Planet. I kind of do wonder if that is real. That seemed so real. And that was, that's been around since way before. Way, way before AI generated voices. Yes, exactly. So it would have either had to been like an amazing imitator yeah. or just Snoop Dogg. And we couldn't say half the shit he said no. on those no. videos on this show. No. Or we'd be bleeping out, look at this motherfucker, this motherfucker over here, this motherfucker's going to get this motherfucker. And that just sounded it, like beep, 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 yeah. beep. <laughs> it would just not be. <laughs> not very entertaining. Productive. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we'll probably watch. Does anybody watch the Summer Olympics? I mean, I feel like that's the one people do watch compared to the Winter, the Winter Olympics. Okay, yeah. Am I nuts? I don't know. And then what did your your buddy Don said to me the other day? Oh, yeah, they've added uh, beat, not beatboxing. Break dancing? Break dancing. Have you seen it? I have not. <laughs> is that a thing to watch? It is. Okay, I'm down. So the gal from Australia has been getting a lot of hate, which kind of sucks because she does really perform some very athletically intri- like intricate moves. And do you remember that one episode of Bob's Burgers where Bob wants to learn how to ballroom dance, Mm -hmm. but the best he can find is a hip hop dance class? Uh And (laughs) the gal in it is like, we're about to like listen to some sick beats. If you don't like the B word, you better close your ears or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, It feels a lot like that. It's sort of like (laughs) in Taylor Swift's Shake It Off when she said, when you could have been getting down to this sick beat. And you hear the most average beat ever made by a white woman ever. Right. Okay. Right. But still, Olympic break dancing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love that the Winter Olympics have gotten a little more X Games now. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have. So, you know, All maybe right. it's worth it. Progress! I will say, I love the <laughs> figure skating in the Winter Olympics, and I love the gymnastics routines in the Summer Olympics, especially the floor routines. I think those are always really impressive. Oh, yeah, the bouncing and the flipping yeah. and the, yeah. Yeah, there's that one where the chick has the ball that she's working with. I haven't seen that one. There have been a couple of different routines where they've used a ball for it, and okay. it's fascinating well and i i did fall in love with mary lou retton at the 1984 oh yeah uh olympics she was just so cute and had a great (laughs) smile and was really good at what she did right yeah i totally get it and she was on a wheaties box yeah who doesn't love that yeah she was like the kelly clarkson of our day i think oh that's cute i love that (laughs) just wholesome yeah yeah (laughs) hey is it time to sell your home make your move with mike helps idaho For over five years, I've been helping Idaho with real estate, buying, selling, investing, and now I'm joined by Carly Morgan so we can help you even more. You know us for telling it like it is on this show. We do the same thing when it comes to selling your home. And we're backed and brokered by the best, Keller Williams Realty East Idaho. And I donate $100 at closing of my own money to a charity of your choice. So make your move with Mike Helps Idaho, link in post. Have you experienced locally raised beef? Mm-hmm. Virgin River Land and Cattle Company sources local Angus fed on green Idaho pastures for a rich beef flavor. I saw right now they've got a great deal on ground beef. Make some burgers and enjoy some summer grilling. You can taste the quality in the ground beef that comes from one local cow for the same price as hamburger in the store. Find them on Facebook, search for Virgin River Land and Cattle Company, and use promo code IFAF to save 15% on locally raised beef. Are you going thrifting? Make sure to visit Elsie's Closet Upscale Resale, trendy fashion that's budget-friendly. Elsie's Closet is Idaho Falls' only thrift store devoted exclusively to women and women's fashion. Right now, they have everything for summer. Shorts, skirts, dresses, crop tops, and tanks. It's not just a stop at the thrift. It's a whole vibe. Look for the pink sign just off Yellowstone on A Street and use promo code IFAF to save 15% off your total purchase at Elsie's Closet. Have you ever heard of Candy Salad? Guests bring a big bag of their favorite candy. Then everyone at your event can mix together their favorites to make a delicious candy salad. DIY Wedding and Event Rentals has so many fun containers to display the candy. It's an amazing treat and just another cute idea from DIY Wedding and Event Rentals. Call or text 208-403-2040 today. That's 208 208- 
403-2040 and use promo code IFAF to save 15% off all your rentals. Our friends at Roof Rescue are doing something cool. In celebration of their 10th anniversary, they're giving away four free roofs to people who make a significant impact right here in our community. Know someone like this? Nominate them for a new roof today. Link in post. Maybe it's a veteran or a member of the military, a first responder, teacher, or anyone that deserves it. You can also call your local Roof Rescue in Idaho Falls. Twin Falls, and Logan Lincoln Post. Roof Rescue, providing watertight peace of mind. Have family or friends visiting you in Idaho this summer? Send them home with the best souvenir, a unique t-shirt from Teton T-Shirts. Yeah, if the Idaho Falls tourist tees at local gift shops, just don't do it for you. Go take a look at Teton T-Shirts. Link and post. Enjoy a real piece of Idaho designed right here by me, Mike Nelson, the genius mind behind this show. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, well, that's kind of the perfect t-shirt for summer, isn't it? Isn't it, though? Uh, yeah. This is the Icy logo, famously parodied by our parody department. <laughs> but it looks really good. That, uh, and it's so summer. Yeah. You know, yeah, like, right? I don't think, here's the thing. I never give two shits about an Icy during the winter, but during the summer, <laughs> addicted. You could have it's a, meth. Yeah, and the thing about Icy's is... We used to have, not everybody remembers, we did actually have a 7-Eleven in town. Right, right. It was at the corner of 17th and Holmes. Yes. Uh-huh. Where there's a common sense now. Right, right. I know exactly the one. 7-Eleven has Slurpees. Right. But any place that isn't 7-Eleven, which has been mostly East Idaho for most of all time, mm-hmm. We got the good old-fashioned Icy's. Yeah. You yeah. know, when I was a kid, I remember there being somewhere... That had a banana flavored one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yummy. Delicious. It was so good. <laughs> Do those even exist anymore? God, I don't know. I'm sure 7 Eleven so. has them, but. Mm-hmm. Well, and to be fair, the main place I ever had, like Slurpees, Icy's, slushies of any kind, yeah. was the movie theater. Because okay. when I was a kid, right. my yeah. dad would basically just take me into work with him all day for eight hours a day. <laughs> and we'd go to movie after movie, just like waiting for my dad to be done. And if he was feeling really nice every now and then, he'd buy us some food. <laughs> what a child's <laughs> so we <weren't laughs> dream. <laughs> well, but every now and then he'd be nice enough to buy us some popcorn and a couple of slushies. And I'd always get the cherry one because the only two options were cherry and Coke. And I didn't really like Coke. I, I don't like Coke as a flavor. Oh, I, okay, like, I don't yeah. like Coca-Cola. To I don't me, like Pepsi. I don't like cola flavored stuff. I like root beer and that's it. To me, there's nothing like an ice cold Coke slushy. Right, right. Coke brand slushy. Well, the nice Don't you thing- try to RC me. <laughs> Well, the nice thing is then you and I could still go and we could, you could get your Coke and I could get the cherry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I could put a little bit of mine in yours and you'd have a cherry Coke. We had, <laughs> <laughs> we had so much popcorn. Oh, I know. The weekend we watched uh, <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh-huh. And Long Legs. At the Motor View. And then Long Legs <laughs> the next night at Edwards. Mm-hmm. It was so, I had so much popcorn at the Motor View that my lips got numb. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And then you were saying that there's a... And we didn't see the Wolverine popcorn bucket that we were hoping to see. No, unfortunately. Not but at Edwards either. I will say I do love this whole thing with the whole novelty buckets. Yeah. What They're w- super cute. What's the new one? The newest one I've seen is for Beetlejuice 2. Okay. It looks like one of the sandworms wrapped around the bucket. Oh, nice. So definitely not nearly as... um evocative let's say <laughs> as the wolverine or the um or provocative yeah right or the uh Dune Porn two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dune two buckets um so you know that's kind of nice sure i'm glad that they finally reeled it in a little <laughs> yeah still got a giant worm going I around mean, yeah it. that's true still kind of phallic in its own way <laughs> but at least it's not yonic like the other two have been <laughs> right yeah yes, or yonic? i suppose so Either way, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wolverine's mouth wide open. Yeah. yeah. The, the so inviting for du- your hand to grab some popcorn. <laughs> Dune ten. Dune ten. What am I trying Dune to? Dune two. Dune dentata yes. bucket. This, yeah. <laughs> right. You know right. what I'm talking about. Right. Oh yeah. Oh uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> Sandworm dentata. <laughs> there. Yeah. Dune two dentata. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's hard to say. And has nothing to do with tatas. Nope. All right, but yeah, I like that they're getting a little more creative. This Deadpool and Wolverine one really was 
I don't want to say a disappointment, but it was just like spend twenty three dollars more and get this right. bucket you can use forever. Although I will say that those buckets serve a purpose. You oh, you uh-huh. know how uh, every family. I think we've <laughs> talked about this. I had a feeling that's where you were going to take it. Now I think the Wolverine one would be better. Of the two for this. Yeah. Because the, the Dentata one, you're going to get chunk stuck. Yes, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it's this multi-purpose bucket in your house that's large. Well, usually it's a bowl. And you either have it for, uh, yeah, a bowl, bucket. Yeah. A receptacle like that. And you vessel. either You have a vessel. <laughs> you have it for family movie popcorn night. Uh-huh. Or it's the bucket mom hands you when it's time to throw up. When yeah. Yeah. When, when you're, you're home sick with the flu and you've been barfing everywhere and she's trying to save some cleanup. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. But you actually came up with, because I was, I got a little touch of the flu. Yeah. Some of the man flu. You came up with <laughs> the perfect thing. I would agree. Personally. The, the perfect thing. Yeah. I think it, I think it makes so much more sense because I've seen the whole big bowl thing and I've even tried it and I don't like it. It doesn't make sense to me. Uh, and it's too bad. It's not here. Right. Right. But you can imagine it. It's based. Okay. So instead of using a big old salad bowl, instead I use a plus size pitcher or any pitcher really. It'd be a great pitcher for serving lemonade uh-huh. at your backyard barbecue on a hot summer day. Right. Like any Dollar Tree pitcher would work just fine. I think mine is a Rubbermaid brand one. Uh, but yeah, the whole idea basically is just that. So if you need a barf, I think this makes so much more sense <laughs> for a couple of spew, reasons. If you're going to spew, spew into this. <laughs> right. But here's why I think it makes more sense. <laughs> is that First Wayne's off, world? <laughs> I think it is. Yeah, I think it's what... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Garth says yeah, okay. to a guy in the van or something like that. Anyway, uh, but here are the few reasons why I think that it is the superior vomit vessel of the two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. First and foremost, it's got a handle. Like you're already hurling your guts out. The one thing you don't want to have to worry about is grip strength. You can either slide yeah, your hand in between yep. and just sort of cradle it yep. um, without worrying about like, <laughs> can you imagine if you were like holding the bowl and you squoze a little too tight and then yeah. it flung up over right. your shoulder and into your face? Or you're Horrible. reaching over for something on right. the nightstand right. in the middle of the night. It's good yep. for that. You yeah. just handle. swipe a handle. Right? It's like a... Divers yeah. regulator sweep. Right. You know, right. you know it's right there. Yeah. Not only that, but I like that it is kind of the exact <laughs> size of a face. So you can just put your right. face right in it and you're good. Whereas the other one, you could go for it and it could splash up the other side. You know? I'm not sure I've ever had that happen, but I can imagine it, it doing could, so. I mean, yeah, depending. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, so that's a couple of reasons. Not only that, but also easy pour spout. So, so when you're all done, you can just the, pour it out without having to worry about it dribbling down the side. Right. Right yeah. into the toe-toe. Or mm-hmm. the, some people use the garbage disposal. I mean, if we're going to have a garbage disposal. Wherever you pour your puke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think, honestly. This is the perfect puke pitcher. Mm-hmm. Well, and frankly, mixing <laughs> bowls are expensive and usually come in a set. And I don't want to ruin one by barfing <laughs> in it. Whereas I could go to the Dollar Tree Get one pitcher for a dollar and then have that be my vomit pitcher. If there's if there's one thing you take away from this episode, it ought to be puke pitcher. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Make that happen in your life <laughs> today. Considering it is summer, I've made a couple of really nice little trips to some of the local hotspots around here. Little staycation activity. Yeah. Now, there is one that I feel like not a lot of people know about that they should totally know about. And that is the uh, Butterfly Haven over in Pingree, Idaho. So it's just past Blackfoot. Um, It's definitely a little out in the boonies, kind of in the middle of nowhere. But we went to it, I want to say, one or two years ago for the very first time. Yeah. How long ago was that? It might have been one year. I think it was one year ago. I think we went two years ago. You wanted to go last year and we didn't really or something. That sounds kind of right. Anyway, uh, magical. Just yeah. so cool. Um, and so Instagrammable. Right. Yeah. Like so the, uh, Instagrammable. Like the sunflowers that they do, which right. which are coming, coming up, up pretty, pretty soon. quick, I think, at the Wild uh-huh. Adventure Corn Maze. So yep. don't wait for the corn maze because that's when they're mowing down the sunflowers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's this big old greenhouse that has a whole bunch of plants that they release a bunch of butterflies in. And the butterflies, you know, do their normal life cycle with the whole chrysalis eggs, caterpillars, all that jazz. And then you get to see these big, beautiful butterflies 
flying around for the season. And it's a great way, too, because it helps to kind of conserve them and make sure that they're not being all eaten up by predators the entire season. And you get to enjoy them, too. And the there's there's a dude and a gal who have been running it forever. It started as the dude's hobby, I believe. Right, right. And he can tell you he'll be there. Uh-huh. And he can tell you anything about whatever butterfly mm-hmm. or pupa or larvae, <laughs> or I don't even know how you say these things, but right, right. See, this butterfly is this is the larva for it. Uh-huh. Like it, it was just fascinating. It was really neat. One of the other things that I really love about this particular exhibit are the button quail that they have just running around. Yes. Now, unfortunately, the day that I went, apparently, like a big group of kids had gone before me, so they all the quail were a little shy after <laughs> we're that. Like, yeah. This. And they mainly stayed in like the trees and stuff, but a few did come out and I did get to feed them from uh, my hand, which was really sweet. Aww. And I love the little quail, uh, but I actually ended up having a few more butterflies land on me than I did last year because we went at peak butterfly season instead of the very end, like last time. Uh, so I thought that was really cool. So is peak butterfly season like right now? I would say so. Yeah. Through what? The end of August or? Um, I want to say that they do close in the end of August. Okay. So that would make sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it was really cool, and it, it's really not very expensive. I think for an adult, it's like twelve bucks or something like that, which is not bad. Um, plus, it's right by like you have to pass by the A and W there to get to it, and we don't have an A and W. Root beer tech. and cheese curds, anybody? Uh, it was pretty good. Oh, I totally, yeah. yeah, I totally got a root beer flow. It was great. That's exactly <laughs> what you did, <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it was really fun, and honestly, I think it's worth the drive. I will say I took two little kids with me, uh, one that was five, one that was seven, and they did great. It was not too far of a drive for them, even though they are both usually kind of off the walls a little. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they, they've got a lot of energy because they're kids. It's a 30, 35 minute drive right, from right. Idaho Falls mm-hmm. proper. Right. And yeah, I thought it was great. I thought it was so worth it. And it's so magical. The So it was a couple of girls that I took with me, with me and they had the best time. That's awesome. They just wanted to like sit there and let the butterflies land on them. It was really sweet. When you first told me, I was like, okay, do we have to? <laughs> and then when I got there, I had the best time. I think you had a better time than I did. I'm the most jaded man in the world. <laughs> Had the best time. Yeah, you really did. Yeah. And you know what? I think we should go again before the season closes because it, it is just so magical and fun. That's cute. Yeah. And you went to the zoo, too. And You've not just only been that, all over this summer. <laughs> not only that, but I had an extraordinarily good time going to the zoo. Uh, so the last time I went to the zoo was, for lack of a better word, harrowing. <laughs> Why? It was horrible. Was it bat night? No. I oh. wish. We actually need to go this year. We've we been to two yet. bat nights. I know. Yeah, they're but coming. Those are coming up soon, too, I they think. They are. They are. We've probably already missed the one for this month, but the n- one for next month All is right. probably coming up. Now, that being said, last time I went, it was uh, right at the end of the school year. So all of the schools were taking field trips and none of the teachers were watching any of the kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Both times that yeah. I've gone, I went, to, I went with someone who was in a... Uh, an electric wheelchair. Mm-hmm. The first time, none of the kids were watching. They kept dodging right in front of him as he's trying to go. Okay, in his electric wheelchair. Like, kid, you're the one who's going to lose in this equation. I'm yeah. trying to keep you safe by getting you out of the way. Okay. But on top of that, too, like that, the parents kept. to be scary. The parents kept just kind of lazily looking and like seeing what was going on and not doing anything about it. And I'd look at them like. Hey, this this little crotch goblin belongs to you, right? I can see the resemblance. <laughs> are you going to control them, or are they part of the zoo now? Like, is that the plan? Is that right. what's going are on? Right, a feral child oh. who belongs in a zoo. Right, dude. And they were all I've just... I've heard that said about me a couple times. <laughs> well, and they were all just loud and inconsiderate, and you couldn't get around anywhere. It was the worst. Yeah. Um, but this time was the exact opposite. Oh. It was pleasant. It was the perfect temperature of a day. I think it was like... 80 degrees the entire time. We've had some great weather the past 20 days, right. 80s and 90s. Oh, just yeah. beautiful, right? Right. But yeah, so uh, beautiful weather the entire time. And I think we saw every animal except for two. 
and that was the serval and the snow leopard, and both of those are pretty elusive anyway. Sure, but most of them were out and active. Out and about. Like the lion, he was pacing around right near the top of the den. Yeah. And there were a couple of times as we were like kind of between the lion and the zebra enclosure where he like looked directly at me. <laughs> you know, like That's always staring great. Staring me yeah. down, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was really cool. Sorry about the chain link fence. Otherwise, <laughs> I'd be your meal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly. But that's um, but that's an encounter, you know? Right, that's like a right. up yeah. close. Yeah, I got to stare a lion in the eyes. Yeah. Not only that, but also the guy I went with, he had never had Dippin' Dots before. <laughs> oh! So I got him some Dippin' Dots. Uh, it's the, the ice cream the of Oreo the future. Ones. Okay, now here's the funny Since thing. Since 1880. <laughs> right? <laughs> here's the funny thing about these ones. Instead of the normal little cups that they came in, it comes in a pouch. Oh. Yeah. Oh, so you can just kind of... style. Okay, like Gogurt? I mean, it wasn't like gooey, but yeah, it came in like kind of a like that shape pouch. Okay, so yeah, not like quite... Yeah, double, double wide of Gogurt. Yeah. And like probably... To a third, uh, like a third chopped off. But of it. rather than messing with a bowl and a spoon, right? You could just dump it in your mouth. I love it. <laughs> it was genius, That's honestly. Genius. Yeah, so I thought that was kind of cool, and there were a couple of really nice uh, encounters that I had where, like, okay, I sent you the picture of the fennec fox. Yes. Who was? Let's so put cute. this up. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little baby. Just being a little baby. Aww. He was napping. Right? So, like, there's the glass, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a shelf, right, perpendicular next to the glass. And he was right there on the shelf. Uh -huh. Like, he was on display himself. And he was just napping away. He didn't care. <laughs> Fennel fox. Wait, Fennec. not, not, yeah. Fennec <laughs> foxes. Uh huh. And have you ever heard them laugh? Oh, they're so cute. On the tiki talkies? Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Fennec foxes and red pandas. Oh. If I could just have a zoo with all. Just those. You know, actually, that's another one that I didn't get to see much of was the red panda. Yeah. I saw his little tail hanging down, but they're always so lazy hanging out in the back. They don't like to come up near the front. Somewhere on my Mike Helps Idaho Instagram in the last three weeks, there's mm -hmm. a uh, red panda laying on. He's just oh. slumped over a block of <laughs> ice that they threw in there. And then it, he gives it an occasional <laughs> lick. <laughs> and it's like, I want that life right yeah <laughs> yeah that sounds nice dude <laughs> but yeah i love red pandas too i like when they put up their stupid little paws <laughs> yes yeah is that a defense mechanism or it a is. greeting no it's a defense okay but yeah when yeah. they do the like you you because they've got such little arms you know they like barely go over their little heads <laughs> you picture that right before that moment a cop said you up against the wall <laughs> right drop right. it yeah, red panda. They're so cute, though. I love red pandas. You know, I actually made a really funny observation. A lot of the animals over in the little Asia area are gingers. Oh, funny. Because they've got the red panda. They've got the red crowned crane. Uh, they've got the tigers, which I would argue is ginger. Uh, yeah. You know. And you being a ginger, you would you know your gingers. I noticed. Yeah. I noticed. You know your Ed Sheerans. <laughs> yeah. And your um, Elizabeth Olsen's? I, yeah, yeah. And your tigers. And my Rebas. Yes, and your Rebas. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, kind of funny. <laughs> you love your Reba. <laughs> I do. That's Carly's old woman show. Yeah, it's been my comfort show lately, and it's so yeah. good. And you know, honestly, as a divorcee, it does kind of like it makes me appreciate the whole series a little bit more. Okay. Now, thank goodness I don't have kids in the mix or anything. But like, but I mean, you could say that about a lot of pop cultures. It's right. relatable to different people in different times of their lives. Right, right. Anyway, it's like been right great. now, I'm on Breaking Bad. <laughs> but you know, you know, when you see those people in those mm -hmm. situations, you go, "Is that? Could I have done that?" <laughs> right. Would, would it makes that you kind of question your life. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Love those shows. Okay. Right. Reba. But anyway, gingers. I Lions. loved the zoo. I had such a good time. I was shocked by how much walking I did because it doesn't seem like that big of a zoo. But honestly, from the time I was a kid to now, it's expanded quite a bit. Yes, it has. You know? And I mean, just in the last couple of years, right, where they put in right. the new building and blocked off that mm -hmm. one street mm -hmm. by the 4-H building and you can no longer get there now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, there. yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's impressive. Expanded. It's pretty it's impressive. It's significant. And I love that they're doing that bat experiment with the INL. And you I got think that's your so cool. circles and you closed your steps or whatever you wait, right. I reverse that. <laughs> what about the INL and the bat thing? Well, and I like that they're doing that experiment alongside the INL with the bats. 
episode now, two. We went to two bat nights yeah. late last summer. Uh-huh. Is that what you're talking about? I am. Yep, that's okay. exactly it. It's really kind of cool. You, you go in. I thought the lecture was too long for my tastes, but I'm... <laughs> I was into it. I love bats. I'm a hyper boy <laughs> that just wants to get to it. Yeah, you wanted to see the critters. Yeah, but it was cool. We did see the critters. We shot some what i thought was slow-mo video but i don't mm-hmm. think we got anything significant yeah the I second time we see... went we didn't see nearly as much as the first time because yeah. the first time we went it was right after a rain like it had rained that day or the day before so the bats were really hungry and they were really active uh the second time we went it was like september middle of summer the and that's didn't care yeah that's when i had my yeah. camera going i was like okay i'm gonna go because we didn't realize how much we would see the i'm gonna first use time. a gimbal I'm going to do it in slow-mo at uh-huh. 240 frames per second, 60 <laughs> FPS, mm-hmm. and didn't get shit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it was still really fun, and I love Bat Night, and I love getting to support the zoo, and it's only like six or seven bucks a pop, Yeah. so I think it's well worth it, and you get to see the tigers and stuff, too, or we, sorry, the lions and stuff, too. I yeah. think it's worth it. And ligers. Yeah. Yeah. And bears. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, I actually got a really cute video of the sloth bears playing together. <laughs> All right. We'll put that up too. Yeah. Fantastic. They're such little turds. I love the sloth <laughs> bears. <laughs> That's super cute. Okay. I take it back. Fennec foxes, red pandas, mm-hmm. and these sloth bears. Uh-huh. That's just, they're they're loaded they're with cute, cuteness. Right? Yeah. And they kind of do the little thing too <laughs> with their little hands up. Yeah. Uh, the otters were pretty cute too, but I didn't mm, get any good otters, videos of them. always penguins. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. and they do penguin feedings every morning at 10 a.m. too. Okay. So you got, and the cool thing was that one of the zookeepers came out and talked to you a little bit about them before they did it. Mm-hmm. They were talking specifically about this one, pe- this one penguin named Marge, I think was her name, and how she's a little old lady and she's like kind of hunched over and stuff <laughs> and when we were watching her feed him you could see exactly which one she was because yeah. she was all hunched over and here's the thing that just killed me she's given up on life mostly she's just here for the fish well here's what killed me she's both got times, long blue hair both times i saw her with a fish in her mouth she ended up dropping it into the pool and i was oh, like oh <laughs> marge so she's not large marge no no, oh. she had a really hard time keeping her fish March, to the we point were where for you. to the point where as we were leaving the exhibit, the zookeeper had gone out the other side and she was feeding some of the uh, penguins in the yard. And I yelled over the fence and I was like, "Hey, just so you know, Marge r- dropped both of her fish in the water." And she's like, "No, that's usual. It's okay. She had her first fish that had her medicine in it, and she'll have more later, and she'll be fine." And I was like, <laughs> "Okay, I just want to make sure because she's just yeah. a lady." <laughs> Take care of Marge. Yeah. But yeah, and you know, that's actually kind of a great segue because the thing is, I know that a lot of people get kind of bummed out that zoos like have these animals in them and they're like, oh, I just wish the animal could run free, da, da, da. But the thing is, nine times out of 10, the animals that are actively in zoos can't live in the wild. Right. They don't have what it takes. They don't have the skills Kinda for like whatever. Me. <laughs> <laughs> right. If there were a zombie apocalypse, you would just lie I, down and give up. I would. Absolutely. You, I'm not fighting that fight. You do not have the skills to survive. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. In Walking Deadland. Yeah. If there was a human, yeah. if the if the zombies set up a human zoo and they wanted a ginger exhibit, I would absolutely be there for that. Yeah. Okay, sure, that's fine. Because I know they'll take care of me and I don't have to do anything and I can lay on a block of ice and occasionally <laughs> lick it all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe we're not so al- unalike, you and I. I, mean, right, yeah, right. I, I identify as that. Yeah, but anyway. Oh, yeah, for... <laughs> but the thing that I love about the zoo is that it does have a really big emphasis on com- conservation. Um, as a matter of fact, as soon as you walk in, they actually give you these little coins for conservation where you get to drop it into one of three options and they'll like actively donate funds to those causes oh, cool. based on how many coins each gets, Sure, which I think is pretty cool. All right. Um, and like I said, these animals aren't going to live in the wild anyway. I'd rather them be in zoos and be alive than be out of zoos and be dead. <laughs> so, right. And it means I get to watch them eat and be cute and sleep <laughs> on ice. So that's cool with me, man. <laughs> I have to say, I kind of like these episodes where I think they're a little softer and more positive, where I'm not just (laughs) bitching about local (laughs) restaurants that deserve to close. Right, right. And Um, TV production. Yeah. Although, speaking of uh, restaurants that close, do you know that there's a new one going into JB's? Oh, in in Rexburg. Rexburg. Yeah, it's going to be a Texas barbecue joint. 
it's apparently currently operating just as a ghost kitchen in the back of Pizza Pie Cafe. Okay, yes. I've heard of these <laughs> ghost kitchens where... Yeah. So it's only available for takeout. Restaurants have kitchens, and when they're not using them, mm -hmm. they lease them to other brands who right. can deliver via DoorDash or whatever, right? Isn't that genius, though? That's uh, genius. Now, I want to I want to think that because they've been doing this, the new... Uh, restaurant that's going to go in JB's is going to do really well because they've had time to get the feedback from the locals and understand what they're wanting. Right. So unlike right. they were already kind of up and running in the market. Right. Exactly. Nice. So unlike another restaurant that would be opening for the first time there, these guys actually have a little experience and have a reputation of, in the community. Right. And, and know what the community okay. wants. Can't wait for it. I know. I'm kind of excited. And yeah. honestly, I've been kind of craving some barbecue lately. We need some. So. Yes, you have. You've got some, um, <laughs> Brisket. Brisket from Brolum's the other night. I got like Ammon. the tiniest, saddest little end piece that was, was left the at last the end piece. of the night. The last piece. I'm not complaining about that end piece, though. That was Honestly, flavorful. I almost didn't take it because it was so small. And I was like, I have to buy other shit anyway. So why would I even bother? But then I was like, well, I want to bother because I want some brisket. <laughs> and I'm so glad I did because it was so good. Another <laughs> ringing endorsement from <laughs> IFAF. So you were saying uh, usually you're kind of boobing about restaurants that deserve to close and stuff like that. Right. This dude, this just feels like a little bit more of a positive episode. Right. Uh, do you want me to totally ruin that, though? Oh, no. Let's blow it up. Let's <laughs> right. build it up and break it down. So apparently there was a corporate pilot who stayed here in town not too long ago at the Fairbridge Inn and Suites, which personally... I've stayed at and I've really liked, so I'm kind of horrified that this happened. Uh, but he woke up the next day with 80 bed bed bug bites all over him. Say that five times. Fast. I know that was really hard. I had to yeah. really think about it. Um, and he actually took a short video where you can see the bugs like Yikes. crawling around. Oh, okay. Well, okay, here's a question um, for me because bed bugs don't happen to us here in Idaho Falls. Uh, to us, IFers, do they? <laughs> they sure We're do. We're so clean. They, well, it has so little to do with clean. So, though. did this filthy out of towner bring these <laughs> bed bugs? I'm kidding. No, <laughs> clearly not. Wow. But, but yeah, how awful is that, right? Well, okay, and here's the Can thing. Can you with buy bed bugs off the internet? Did he bring just a Ziploc <laughs> bag of 80 of them and, like, no way. I'm going to screw these guys. They but didn't also give me free coffee last time. Not worth it. It's just not worth it. Yeah. For the itchy, gross, awful bites no. and having to like. Con I and, saw the bites. Yeah, that, they look. Not only that, can you imagine the risk of contaminating your own home? Right. Because it's so easy to do. Like they can get like uh, the eggs can get left in like the folds of your suitcase. And then when you take your clothes out of your suitcase and toss them on your bed, now your home is infected and you have to spend thousands of dollars getting it uh, fumigated. Here's a fun new worry. I didn't quite realize when moving, you know, 1500 miles mm -hmm. from Salt Lake City to Milwaukee for a gig once that they don't just throw your stuff in the moving van. They throw like four other families' stuff in the moving van. Oh. Did you know this? I did not know that. Yeah, but those that huge does... Atlas or whatever okay, that brand. that does kind of make sense. Ryder, though. whatever. I don't want to call like, out any. Like, y'all are all going the same direction. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And, they're, and while they're unloading, then they go and load again. And so things can okay. get mixed up with other people's things. Right, right. See, that's oh, why you geez. need to spray paint all of your boxes pink. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I guess, but hotels must have that problem a little bit because so many people are, especially in the summer, mm -hmm. coming from so many different places. Right, you never They open know. up their suitcase and there you go. Right, right. That's Yikes. the horrible thing of it. You know, and that being said, you would think that there'd be some kind of regulation helping to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah. But apparently there's not. You know, like they're not really held to any specific standard regarding bed bugs. Here at in least Idaho? As, yeah, at least as far as Idaho goes. Wow. Isn't that's, that horrifying? Can we maybe change that? Well, and, okay. Here's Just the asking. Thing. <laughs> right? Well, and here's the thing. So when I was married to my Mexican, um, he actually <laughs> at one point worked in a group home. And the group home ended up getting bed bugs at one point. And I was terrified of him bringing them home because I know that they are incredibly hard to get rid of and we were living in an apartment. Did he have to breaking bad fumigate? Oh, I had him stripped Hazmat, down. Yeah. So as soon as he got in the door, there was like a two by two tile section before he got to the carpet. In Idaho, we call that a mudroom. 
Well, except that it wasn't a room. It was just right. a mud it's, patch. Yes, right. <laughs> a mud patch. <laughs> anyway, so I would make him strip down on the mud patch, put all of his clothes in a, a, a garbage bag that I'd be holding for him with my held, with my head tilted back. Sure. And then he, like, I had like a plastic this poncho is what, on. <laughs> but this is what you do to fishermen or hunters. Right. <laughs> when they come home, yeah. they walk an inch into the house uh-huh. and then or everything comes Or even better, if you've up. got a garage that you yeah. can get directly into the house from, yes. that's the place to garage be. Garage leading into a laundry mm-hmm. room. Right. That's, I, that's ideal. Right. But anyway, so I had him stripped down. He immediately had to shower. And this is the entire time they had bed bugs. So it was day in, day out, every single time he came home. Wow. There was no coming home for lunch for him. Sure. Okay. Uh, and every single day or You're every other day. You're not welcome here. <laughs> or every other day, we would take those clothes that were sitting in that grocery, in that uh, garbage bag and take them to a laundromat. He'd go in and take a shower. We'd wash those and then we'd be, okay, that's fine. But man, it like, it terrifies me. The idea of getting bed bugs. It sounds and it looks horrible. Right, right. Well, and yeah. a lot of people end up just having to throw out their entire mattress. And like you can't save it. And I love right. my mattress, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I was terrified. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. And then one other sort of piece of bad news to leave you with. Ross Park, huge park in Pocatello. Yeah. For you for you IFers, you may know, you know. Mm-hmm. The YMCA pool or the Idaho Falls Aquatic Center or Mm -hmm. the Ammon Pool or the Ammon Splash Pad. Mm -hmm. But Ross Park in Pocatello, like I know a lot of friends who have great memories Mm -hmm. about that whole pool and facility. That whole complex, yeah. And oopsie, their pipe broke somewhere? Yeah, apparently it was the main pipe to the main pool, the Lazy River, and the Kitty Area, which are like the best parts of it. I love a good lazy river. I remember on my honeymoon, we went to this resort that had a lazy river mm-hmm. and it had a bunch of iguanas running around too. Oh, so hot. it was like a little lazy rivers uh, safari. <laughs> do, do you remember the iguanas that we encountered? I do. In the when we were... <laughs> Those were. Uh, that was cool. The... I remember one time a lizard came like basically scrambling up to me. I could have like reached out and touched him. Yeah. Like, hey, buddy. He's what's hanging. up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Little but, guy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's really sad. And Ross Park. We want to sort of give you a, I'm sure you'll get up and running again soon. <laughs> Although that pipe burst did also affect their electrical pan- panel. So oh, no. I'm hoping it's not too bad, but mm. I personally think that it's good that they've taken the steps to close down to keep everyone safe. Sure. And because of that, Ross Park. You are IFAF this week. Chris Pi mm-hmm. 5. Whoosh. 21 finger gun Pew-pew. salute. And chef's kiss. To you. To you. We hope you get up and running and back on your feet as soon as possible this season. Mm -hmm. I know the Idaho Falls Rotary Club, Great Snake River Green Belt Duck Mm -hmm. Race, 33rd Annual. Oh, yeah. Happened over the weekend. Um, Sure did. I got a... All Six quack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a you got a quack pack and didn't win shit. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It happens every year. Yeah, but you went to the Roaring Youth Jam. I sure did. And did you do that on Friday? I actually did it on Thursday, which I on love. Thursday, it. and I love that they do one weekday because sometimes you're we like okay if you work any kind of hospitality or restaurant or anything like that, you're gonna be working. During the weekends, so it's nice to have a Thursday off where you can go. Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, but here's some things that I love about it. Now, first off, the Roaring Youth Jam is put on by the Auditorium, aka the Idaho Falls Arts Council, which is super cool already. Um, and basically, it's like a battle of the bands for you know younger folks, uh, and they have all these other little fun activities that you can do, all of which are free, by the way. So you go around to like all these little booths. I think there are nine, no, 10 of them that are done by the auditorium and kids can take part in different activities that they have there. Their theme this year was the um, Art Eras Tour. Okay. Which I thought was really smart because of course Taylor Swift is a big deal right now. Little parody of Taylor Swift, right? right? And there are totally these huge eras in art that are worth talking about and each of the booths had kind of a different era which I thought was really fun. Sure, okay. Yeah. The other cool thing is that different businesses can set up booths too and also offer activities for the kids to do. One that I thought was really fun was this um, squirt gun paint 
booth. Ah. So they put paint in the squirt gun and you, you know, you get to squirt your little paper. <laughs> uh, the one thing I don't like about that is you have to take it with you and it has to dry. Right. So the kid I was with kept trying to hand it to me and I was like, look. I'm here to help out, not ruin my outfit. So yeah. no. <laughs> you know. You gotta you gotta <laughs> shake it like a Polaroid picture. You gotta shake it off. Yeah. Because <laughs> Taylor Swift. Uh-huh. Did it. Again. I'm yep. Um another cool one was the <laughs> INL actually did one of those, I forget what the technical term is, but you know those um things that are really big on TikTok where it's like a pendulum and it'll sort of like spray oh, yeah. like it'll drop paint or something. They did that, but it was the flat surface that moved and then they put a little mark down and it would make these really cool little swirls yeah so that was neat um but i just thought it was such a great activity or a great event so kids could go be entertained for the summer do all these free activities that like mom and dad don't have to be like coerced into spending a bunch of money the entire yes, time yes yeah you know and, i think we're all looking for some of those you know right right and they had this toddler tent, which I thought was just genius. Yeah. So it had like foam blocks and stuff that they could crawl onto and stuff. And that way the toddler can be entertained while the other kids that actually like to craft can go around and do their thing. I thought it was just genius. Gotcha. Yeah. And either way, just I the don't fact think... that they do something fun and free like that for the local kids, I thought was just really cool and thoughtful. So I need to be on the roundabout side of the river <laughs> right. one year to experience right. that. Very cool. Yeah. I was a little sad that we didn't get to see any of the bands performing that day because it was a Thursday, I think. And also we went at a really weird time. Um, but everything else was really fun. And this year what they did that I thought was really cute is for every auditorium tent that you went to, you could collect a little pony bead. And at the very end, you'd go to the info the info tent and get a color changing bead Ooh. that changed color in the sun. Oh. Uh, uh, yeah, the little girl I was with thought that was just the coolest thing <laughs> ever. Cool. It was actually pretty neat. Even I thought it was kind of cool. Like at one point, they picked up the little box that they were in and held it in the sun. You saw them all change color. It was pretty dope. It's dazzling. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. All right, one other fun thing that happened. Speaking of Ammon, it was Ammon Days. It was, and it was awesome. This past weekend. So I feel a little dumb because I thought that when they like lit up the air balloons it meant that they were going to go into the sky and oh, there was yes. going to be like a whole rapunzel at least at last i see the light moment <laughs> they don't they sit on the ground which is okay and it was still really cool and impressive yes but i was kind of sitting there like okay when did they launch <laughs> Right. And then I turned You're to someone waiting for something more right and then i turned to someone and i was like they're gonna fly right and she's like no have you never been to this and i was like no, I yeah. haven't. I'm sorry. And it was just Carly. I wasn't able to go. <laughs> yeah. But um, still, some impressive video that we'll leave uh -huh. you with. Have a great week. Subscribe on YouTube. Let the algorithm know that you want more of this. Remember the puke picture and the answer to everything, especially in the summer, is more water and love yourself. Stay fresh, cheese bags. <laughs>